Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org and this is our Caves Unit Study that I'm doing with my homeschool kids elementary age and we are using um, Earth and Space by Bright Ideas Press, the chapter on caves as our jumping off point. In that chapter you have a description of the different speleothems, which are uh, cave formations, um, stalactites, stalagmites, that kind of thing. There's an experiment on how to make speleothems, which I will show you in just a minute in a video clip. There's also several um, uh, coloring pages. Well, this one, for example, has a, um, a man going down on this bungee cord, spelunking into the cave. And so this is kind of a cool uh, picture. And also this is a diagram where you have stalactites, stalagmites, and columns. Well, my daughter and I wanted to make a cave out of clay. This took us only five minutes because the clay was actually super soft the way it's supposed to be when it's brand new. Sometimes you'll get clay, self-hardening clay, that's actually tougher, so it might take you longer than five minutes. But for us, it was five minutes to do this really cool hands-on activity for caves. Now, if you are studying caves, make sure that you actually go to a cave, okay? Um, inside that cave, you'll see all the dripping of all the um, uh, oozing minerals down the walls and all the formations and things like that. You'll see when they turn off the lights that you can't even see see your hand in front of your face and it's just very very exciting and interesting um, to visit caves so definitely go to caves if you can also in the winter time, you can see um, some stalactites and stalagmites formed outside out of water in the form of icicles, okay? So take a look at some icicles that are hanging off our roof right now, as well as a stalagmite that's coming up out of the ground because of some dripping. Take a look at those two formations we found. Okay, so here are some icicles, and those are like stalactites hanging tightly to the roof. Here we have some more fabulous icicles that are like um, stalactites. So in the winter you can see the same phenomenon that you see in caves. That water, that liquid is dripping and it freezes as it goes down. In the same way minerals uh, collect in a cave and the minerals drip down slowly and cause the same the same formation. Look at the size of this! Yes, it's a stalagmite and as you can see there is a heat vent and ice has formed from the ground up just like in a cave um, something drips and then it just starts from the ground and freezes upward. Pretty yeah. cool. Now I'm going to show you uh, the experiment that we did to grow some speleothems or cave formations out of Epsom salt. Our first take uh, didn't work because our air was too dry and so the string was bone dry but then my husband said to put a box over it so that it retains the moisture and that was successful. So take a look at our first attempt and then our second attempt at growing these cave formations from Epsom salts. Okay. All right, let's, let's see if it keeps, um, okay, is there some on the bottom is what we want to know. So if there is, um, if there's some Epsom salts at the bottom, then that means that this is completely saturated, okay? That means that this water is holding the most Epsom salts that are possible. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to pour this into these two jars, okay, and you want to make it sort of equal. So we're going to go ahead and pour into one jar, and pour into another jar, and just kind of try to make them equal in height. So your jars might, might not be identical, so you just have to eyeball it. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so now that you have that, tie some um, paper clips to the end of a uh, the, that cotton yarn. So this is yarn. And you want to have it two feet long, not one foot long, because it, it's much easier with two feet. So you put them straight down into those. Um, actually, you need to saturate it. It says to saturate it uh, first. So put the string into the water. Okay. And then now you're going to place it in a sunny window. Um, we don't actually have a sunny window because it is the winter time. So, you set it up like this. This is how it looks on day one. And we will be paying attention for the next 10 days and writing down our results on a chart. Don't forget to put some Epsom salts on the platter itself, okay? So that when it drips onto it, it can start forming um, stalagmites from that bottom there. So make sure you have Epsom salt on the uh, saucer. Here we are on day three of our experiment, and I have realized that since we live in Spokane, Washington, our air is super, 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 super dry, which means that the string was bone dry, in which case no crystals are going to grow. So the experiment is impossible. However, my husband said that we need to put some water closer to the top of here so that the capillary action can work better. So I've heated up some more water and some more Epsom salts and I'm going to mix those in until they dissolve. Okay and then what I've done is I've changed the um, string. So I have fresh string because the other string was like hard as a rock and super dry. So yeah, pay attention to that. Okay, so now, that leaf out of there. Okay, so now we're putting this back over here, okay? And you can put a, a box over it. Now the reason they say to put it in a window is to keep the water warm, but actually the kitchen is the warmest part of the house. Right now it's winter and there's snow outside. So um, what I'm doing is I'm going to put this dish in between, okay? And this is saturated, it's got water, this water on it. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna put this here so that the humidity will be good, okay? So I put something like that, okay. So the, um, the water will kind of stay and it won't be so, um, so dry right around it because you have the two jars evaporating some water. So hopefully that will work or we'll put a box on top of it so that it will stay humid in that particular area. So we'll see how that works out. We are now on day 10 of our growing our Epsom salt crystals and um, we have filled in this chart provided by the book and it was just growing a small, small amount, hardly at all. And then suddenly on day eight, there was a whole column just overnight. So take a look at our fun experiment of a column that formed and there's a little bit of um, a stalactite and there's a little bit of stalagmites on the bottom of that formation. And also there's a tiny bit of crystals over here as well. So we have some cave formations in this experiment that took 10 days. And um, it was pretty fun to uh, see how it grew each day, um, especially after the column appeared overnight. So that was a fun experiment. You can go to the library and get extra books about caves. Also, if you see bats inside of caves, that could be a fun study that you can do as a side study when you are studying caves. Uh, one night out on our deck in the summer, my husband and I were looking up into the dark sky and we saw something flying around that was too big to be an insect and too small to be a bird. I said, what is that? And my husband said, oh, it's a bat. 
And I said, no way, because I had no idea we had bats in our area. So um, bats are fascinating creatures. They are the only mammal that can actually fly. So they're a kind of strange. They're rodents, but not rodents, you know? So anyways, um, so you can get all kinds of fun uh, cave books from your library or, or just even just about bats and things like that. Uh, you can also uh, go to yard sales and find other uh, books and materials uh, like this um, this caves um, poster I found it at a yard sale and, and it was in a free box it costs nothing it says the US Department of the Interior on it but it's a map that shows different uh, types of uh, formations and so the kids can learn different formations like that just uh, you can also look it up online the different formations and also I know this is uh, rocks and minerals. This is a geode that gets cracked open, and so there are caves sometimes even inside minerals. Isn't that interesting? Another thing you can do when you are studying caves, if it's the winter and you have snow, where you live, you can make a snow cave. Um, in my YouTube channel, I have a video called Snow Cave, and I give you some tips on how to make a snow cave so that it doesn't cave in. And so um, take a look at this picture, which shows what our snow cave look like. I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org. Thanks for watching our fun cave unit study.